Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we have two titans of anime going at it today. Goku versus Drago. Dragon Ball versus Bakugan. Let's begin here. So Goku, and we're using Dragon Ball Super Goku, by the way. We should already know the origins of Goku at this point. No need to explain that. Goku should have already surpassed the power of Kid Buu, or um, Buu Han dash Kid Buu, or at least Buu itself, just from his base power. He's even gone as further as surpassing the Super Saiyan God of power level that he originally got from Battle of the Gods as well. This was stated by Beerus, who stated that Goku in his base form, sorry, his God Key was absorbed into his base form or his Super Saiyan level state or something like that. All right. So basically what you guys see here on the panel. Goku at that time was also able to clash with Beerus and almost destroy the macrocosm. And this would have included not only just the um, regular universe, this also included the realm of the Kais and would have also included other realms and universes as well. Goku would also go on to get so strong that he's competing with characters that can manipulate time and space. This will also equate to his speed as well as he would be easily faster than time, being able to move and react to characters that can pretty much exceed his speed here. Goku has even had picosecond reaction time, being able to do a trillion push-ups. Goku has also been able to surpass power levels such as Shattering Dimensions and being able to surpass the power of Jiren and Topo by at least the Moro arc. This is impressive and important because Jiren in Dragon Ball, sorry, in Dragon Ball Super was able to shake an entire world void okay this is an entire void with an infinite amount of nothing the best they had was just a little bit of light and a couple of the arena and then the place where Zena was sitting this is a world without time or space and it's filled with an infinite amount of literally nothing and jiren was able to pretty much shake it with his power level so this means that jiren was capable of shaking a infinite amount of nothing and Goku winded up surpassing him during the Tournament of Power as well. This would also make him stronger than Super Saiyan Blue Evolution Vegeta, who was able to overpower Topo. And Topo was actually, you know, while him cheek clapping Frieza, basically what it was here, he was able to pretty much see the world of Void. Here, creating stars and even a cosmic body. This is, it's absolutely ridiculous here. This would then go on for Goku to surpass the likes of Broly and surpassing his Gogeta or Blue Gogeta, who was capable of shattering dimensions. This would then lead Goku to finally going all the way up to Gas and Granola, who each made the wish to be the strongest mortals in the universe, meaning that no matter how hard Goku and Vegeta fought, that they would be able to pretty much increase their power to get stronger than the states they were already at this means that goku was eventually able to surpass gas at least for a little bit with his power level but despite this gas was dying as well so you can honestly make the argument his body was getting brittle as the fight progressed here but at the same time it doesn't matter gas was still getting stronger and stronger as the fight progressed and goku was able to eventually keep up and surpass gas a couple of times during the fight until the very end goku also has a plenty of key manipulation like kamehameha solar flare the spirit bomb um uh, he also has like you know the key palm or whatever goku just has a plethora of ways of using his key whether it's to increase his strength speed his durability pretty much put a god bind on his opponents doesn't matter that's how goku is next up is his opponent drago drago is pretty much the pyrus main bakugan of the entire bakugan series and is the strongest and most powerful bakugan in that series as well drago is incredibly strong and has surpassed multiple layers of infinity he easily scales above all of his other previous incarnations that have been able to defeat Naga, Darak, and Hydranoid. Let's talk about that, right? So Naga, with the Infinity Core, was able to merge the Bakugan universes, which were six. So six different universes that were the little concepts of their element. The concept of wind, darkness, fire. 
fire, wind, water, earth. You, you guys get it. The literal concepts of these elements. Naga was able to merge them not only into one universe, but then bring those universes, so that's six, right? And merge them with our universe. This even includes the Doom Dimension, which is basically the Bakugan version of the Underworld, okay? And Drago would go on to surpass this. He would go on to surpass the Infinity Core as well. He would go on to surpass the Silent Core. He would go on to surpass multiple layers, and I mean multiple layers of Infinity, okay? It didn't matter what it was or... Pre pre where it was or who it was from he would just go on to pretty much surpass those layers of infinity as if they were nothing so drago pretty much easily just scales to multiversal but what has he done over the years to pretty much cement that right well he's beaten naga he's beaten helios he's beaten you know bakugan that can easily destroy you know the universe and the entire actually at being able to destroy entire timelines itself so drago being able to surpass that kind of power is not surprising at all it's very common in bakugan for these guys to pretty much surpass these levels of power and to continuously grow and get stronger so drago has a lot going for him he also has incredible speed being able to react to heyas bakugan heyas bakugan are known as light itself so these bakugan everything they do is pretty much light based. Dragon has even been able to overpower abilities and actually has pretty good hatch resistance. He is resistant to nullification, um, energy absorption as well. He has this, he should have the same feedback as Darak, who was able to overload Saboteur with his sheer power. Meaning that they have an infinite amount of power, an infinite amount of pretty much an infinite amount of sources as well. Drago can also summon a plethora of things. He can summon a Mectagon to pretty much aid him in battle and summon various mechanical um, artillery known as battle gear to aid him in the field of battle. So, yeah, that's pretty much Drago. Surpassing multiple layers of infinity, being able to destroy and pretty much defeat Bakugan who can merge entire universes, making that multiversal plus, and surpassing more surpassing bakugan that are easily stronger than that of those who were able to merge entire universes so again that would make drago around the multiversal to higher levels of category okay so without further ado i think it's safe to say here we can actually you know we can actually begin here so who wins when it comes down to goku versus drago who actually takes the cake between these two what categories do they take you guys know the deal so let's begin right now when it comes down to power scaling between these two these two have a lot to really go over as you guys can kind of tell i kind of simplified the power levels here and kind of just got straight to the point here not really too much in the origin not really too much into that so let's go over the advantages goku takes the skill agility reflexes and the techniques advantage Goku easily uh, can outskill and outmaneuver Drago, especially with his true Ultra Instinct here. However, when it comes down to it here, Goku does not have the... What's the word I'm looking for? He does not have the AP advantage over Drago at all. Goku does have the... Again, does have the multiversal power level. There is no if, and, or buts about it. Goku has multiversal levels of power being able to surpass characters that are able to pretty much seed the world of void and pretty much surpassing characters that are able to um what's the word i'm looking for shake an infinite amount of nothing this means that these characters here should pretty much surpass you know multiversal levels of power in general so this means goku should honestly um yeah he, he honestly just has multiversal levels of power However, Drago not only has multiversal levels of power, but he surpasses that as well. His hacks, his abilities, his energy projection, his energy manipulation, and his gear usage all pretty much give him a leg up over Goku. What I actually see this as, it's kind of like a... It, it's kind of like... It, it. I would have to say it's kind of like... Um, 
I think the best way I could say it, it's kind of like a Goku versus Superman situation. Drago really doesn't have a well of power where he could cap at, you know? Meanwhile, Goku continuously does. Yes, he has an infinite amount of potential, but he does have that limit when it comes to that power. There's also the other things that these characters can do that kind of just sealed the deal for them, right? Drago can add on artillery. Goku cannot. Goku has to amplify his key continuously to keep up with Drago. Meanwhile, Drago can use his energy manipulation to create shields, to create vortexes of fire that can bypass Goku's durability. He can use battle gear. He can use a lot. He can summon a lot more weapons that can pretty much just take down Goku. All right. So while Goku can last long in this fight here, I just think that the power eclipse, the speed, the AP advantage, the hats advantage, Drago and the and the weapons and gear advantage as well here. Drago simply has too much for Goku to actually deal with. Yes, Goku can put up a good fight and Goku can definitely last when it comes down to it. But in terms of everything I just stated and then some, Goku is just not at the same levels when it comes to Drago's Haxes. He just has simply too much for Goku. <clears throat> Ooh, excuse me. He simply just has too much for Goku to pretty much overcome when it's all said and done. Because by the end of this fight here, Goku may even be exhausted and out of stamina while Drago is simply just fresh and ready to go on every occasion here. So at the end of the day here, I'm going to have to give it to Drago at least 9 out of 10 times until Goku is has a pretty much a good and significant way to surpass him. But let me know what you guys think down below. Do you think Goku wins or do you think Drago wins? Please comment down below. Like and subscribe and share with your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.